Hello everybody. The purpose of this video is to learn how to do database searches smartly in Bubble. Now let me first go through with the setup that I have right now. I'm going to divide this into two tasks. The first task is pretty simple. Two items of the same name cannot exist, which means that we are going to create an item, say a product, which will have a name and a price, and we'll press the button create. Now we need to search the database to check if it already exists. If it does, then we need to give an error that it already exists. If it doesn't, then we need to create it. Now, um, one simple way to do is, is that we add a condition on this create button. We will do a search for the database. We will find that product with this specific name. If, it, if the count is zero, do this. If the count is not zero, do that. Instead of that, a better approach to do is to place a group, an empty group, an invisible group somewhere along the page. And we search for that specific product in the database with the condition that uh, whatever the product is, that the name is equal to input names value, and we find out the last item or the first item. Now, if a product of this name already exists, then this group will have a data source. If it doesn't, then it will be empty. So instead of adding conditions um, on workflows, instead of searching the database on workflows, what we can do is we can search it on a group, and then we add the conditions on top of it. So the conditions that I have added here is, so on the button create, if group product data product is empty, the name of the group is group product data. If the product inside it is empty, which means that when the page was loaded, Bubble searched the database, it did not find any product, so the data source of that group is empty. If it is empty, it means it does not exist. It means we can create a new product with that name and price and resetting the relevant inputs. But if it already exists, then it can give us an air alert that says it already exists. Let us go through it quickly. So right now, I do not have any products. As you can see, this white empty space here. Let me add pizza with the price of one, going to create it. Now it has created me uh, a product with this name. If I were to create this again, with whatever the price is, because the check is all only on the name, it will give me an error that it already exists. So we have achieved this functionality. Instead of adding the search on the database on the workflow of the button, we are instead searching it in a group and then we are adding conditions on top of it. Now, and even let's take this to the next step. An even important part here is if a product that does not exist in cart, then create it. If the product exists in cart, add its price. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press the button add, and there is no cart item that already exists. So if it doesn't exist, it is just going to create a cart item, and it will add the price that is added here. If does exist, then it will just append the price. So the first time I press the button of add, it is going to simply add that cart item. The next time I press add, it is going to add the price into it. So again, one way to do it is to add searches on the button. The other way to do is is to add a group, which is an empty group somewhere. Um, I have added one here. This searches for cart items. It's uh, a table, and it, it checks if that product exists. Now, the conditions on the add button are such that if the cart item is empty, which means it does not exist, you need to create a new cart item. But if the cart item already exists, then you need to make changes to that specific cart item, and you just need to add the amount into it. Now, this is the optimized way of doing it. The unoptimized way of doing it is right below. On this add button, let me go through the conditions on that. On this add button, I have searched for cart items. If the count is zero, then create a new cart item. Then again, do a search for cart items. If the count is not zero, then make changes. Then again, do a search for cart items, pick that specific cart item, and append the amount into it. Now let us quickly compare the differences between these two. If I click on add, it takes some time to create the first product. If I click on add again, it will take more time because it is searching the database more than once, and then it is appending it. If I click on add again, you can check that it takes some time before it changes the value. This is the unoptimized approach. Let me delete that and do it on the optimized approach. We can check that it is very quick. Two, three, four, five. So instead of having database searches on, on workflows, it is better that we have it on groups on the front end. We can hide them and 
an even better approach is to not create extra groups, rather use the ones that already exist without a data source. We can add a source to it and uh, just use the conditions on that. Hope this was helpful. Thank you very much.